Alrighty gang, we got some dangerous storms coming to the deep south on Saturday. Already it's a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk drawn by the Storm Prediction Center, and there's a chance it could be further upgraded. Alexandria and Monroe, Louisiana are in that zone. So is Tupelo, Meridian, and Jackson, Mississippi. In western Alabama, Tuscaloosa is included, as are folks along Interstate 5920. But across the broader region, we also have a level 2 out of 5 slight risk for New Orleans, Mobile, Atlanta, and Nashville too. The main concern will be a couple tornadoes, perhaps an isolated strong tornado. Damaging straight line winds nearing hurricane force and spots are possible as well. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms and follow me as well on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So diving in, we got this bowling ball pocket of cold air, low pressure, and spin aloft, our upper level low, swirling offshore California. That's our instigating upper level system. And this will dive east, approaching the Mississippi River by Saturday night. That upper level support generates a surface low over Kansas that treks east. By Saturday night, it's right near Memphis, Tennessee. Now that surface low is breathing in air, so it breathes in warm, humid air from the Gulf and wafts that over the deep south. And that's why it'll feel so warm, so steamy by Saturday afternoon. That soupy air translates to instability or thunderstorm fuel, which is why we think storms will sprout. But the biggest question, Will the storms rotate? And there's a good chance they do. You see, we got this big jet stream dip approaching. We call it a trough. It's kind of kinked south because of our bowling ball low pushing it south. That means at the surface, we have winds out of the due south that's pumping in the humid air. But at about 10,000 feet, they're out of the southwest. That change of wind speed and direction with height, known as wind shear, will cause any storms that span multiple layers of atmosphere to rotate. The storms get tall, they feel the changing winds, and they spin. These potential supercells would form ahead of the main line. Within the squall line itself along the cold front, you get damaging straight line winds, maybe 60, 70 miles an hour in spots, and a couple of kinks of rotation that become quick hitting tornadoes. But this stronger tornado potential will be relegated to supercells that form in the open warm sector, the warm humid air mass ahead of any fronts. Now here's the thing. I see two potentially limiting factors that might mitigate a bigger severe weather event. Number one, if it's too cloudy, we cut back on daytime heating. There might be some morning storms around, causing cloud cover, cutting back on how much we warm the ground, and subsequently reducing instability or thunderstorm fuel. If we don't get enough juice in the lower atmosphere, we don't pop supercells. That remains to be seen. And number two, the jet stream dip, the trough, is tilted positively. It's leaning like this. And that doesn't really give it as much oomph as if it was negatively tilted, like a backslash, like this. Think of a soccer player. When they're like this, they're kind of getting ready to kick, but when they go like this, they follow through. You need more of a follow through to get a higher and severe outbreak. We're not sure if that will be the case. So again, a lot can change in the next 48 hours, but regardless, stay tuned, stay weather aware. We'll have updates tomorrow and Saturday. Erica will likely be live streaming during the event as well, so please stay tuned for that. And as always, stay safe. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.